Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, a upcoming game in development, currently in early alpha uh, development uh, by Game Labs, uh, the developers that brought you Ultimate General Civil War and Ultimate General Gettysburg and games like uh, Naval Action. They're working on a, a trio of new games right now, uh, Ultimate Admiral uh, Age of Sail, this is my land and Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. We're going to be playing the Naval Academy, which is the only mode in the game so far, and we are going to be playing the Speed Basics Level 2. Now, this is a pretty simple mission, but it is the first time that I'm going to be showing off designing a light cruiser or protected cruiser. In previous videos, we have looked at creating a armored cruiser, but we have not yet looked at creating a protected cruiser or a light cruiser. And so we are going to be doing that here today. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to build a light cruiser. The mission in Speed Basics 2 is to build a fast-moving cruiser to, des to destroy an escaping enemy destroyer. Your ship can be designed for maximum speed or balanced uh, speed with survivability and firepower. So essentially, we're going to be going up against a, a smaller but potentially faster adversary. Uh, in our last video, I'm pretty sure we ended up uh, having a large, slow battleship get extremely lucky against an enemy flotilla of torpedo boats. And now we're going to be going against a slightly larger enemy vessel in a destroyer. Uh, with a light cruiser of our own. In terms of our bonus, we can go with uh, maneuverability, mixed technologies, or firepower and armor. I don't really think I want to do firepower and armor because firepower is not going to be super important against an enemy destroyer. Uh, the armor might be, but I don't know how effective it's going to be against torpedoes. So I don't want to go with armor or firepower because it's not, you know, if I was fighting an enemy battleship, then I might do that. Um, maneuverability is more of just saving weight on fuel sto stowage and boiler weight, so maybe that allows me to be a little bit faster. Um, and then mixed technologies is kind of just a mix of things, so gives you an advantage in hull form, stabili stability, floatability, hull weight, boiler weight, fuel stowage, max speed penalty is reduced, um, the acceleration, turning rate, and rudder shift speeds are all increased, and you also get additional resistance. So I think I'm going to go with mixed technologies, just because... I mean, the boiler weight and the fuel storage is nice, but we get a little bit of that um, in the mixed technologies as well. So we'll we'll take a look and see what that looks like, and we'll go ahead and jump in. We've got $2.5 million to design a light cruiser. So we've got light cruiser hull number one. I feel like this is more of a protected cruiser hull, but I could be wrong. Looks like we're going to be playing as an American ship, the light cruiser Columbia. Uh, is going to be the name of our ship. Now, we know the enemy ship is 26 knots, so we probably want to be faster than that. So I'm going to say let's figure out some way for us to build a ship that can make at least 29 knots. And then we'll increase the displacement, uh, I guess, to the maximum for a light cruiser, which is 3,500 tons. You can see the ship has expanded with increasing that displacement. We are going to shorten the range of the ship uh, to very short because, again, in these scenarios, range doesn't matter. That's more of a campaign thing. Bulkheads, I'm going to do many just because we may be facing off against enemy torpedoes if we're charging down a destroyer, so more maybe we'd survive more than one torpedo with more bulkheads. You can see here we're massively overweight by over 700 tons. Uh, the cost of the ship is still within range, however. Um, in terms of our engines, uh, we're going to go with uh, the multiple expansion steam engine. So the technology we currently have at play is either steam basic, triple expansion steam engines, or multiple expansion steam engines, which is the step right before turbines, so probably the late 1890s, early 1900s. So we'll go with that. That should save us some weight. It does. It saves us over 500 tons and gets us almost back to within range. Our fuel is going to be, I guess, oil. That'll save us more weight. So, But, oh, God, that's expensive. So maybe we won't do oil. Maybe we'll just do coal because coal's cheap. Uh, natural boilers, uh, balanced or forced? So I guess the question is, what do we want to do there? Um, we're induced. Every step up the ladder seems to... Looks like force saves us the most weight, so we'll go with forced. Um, auxiliary engines, I don't really know if that matters, I guess. It's more about repairs. I don't actually think I'm going to go with an auxiliary engine. Um, because based off the, the benefits there are primarily to things like tur traverse speed, um, ship repairs, uh, rudder speed, turning rate, acceleration. These things are important, but it also adds a ton of engine weight, and I don't want to do that. Um, in terms of our shafts, we're going to go with... 
Well, it looks like the more shafts we have, the more weight we have. Although it does give us give us a reduced penalty speed. So if I go with like, if I go, oops, if I go with like a triple shaft, then I am up to about 3,800. A single shaft, I'm at 37. We'll do a triple shaft just for. Oh, that's expensive. Maybe we'll do a single shaft. We'll see what that looks like. In terms of our armor, we'll go with Krupp. Uh, it'll save us a ton of weight. It'll get us back within weight range, and it'll get us still within cost range, actually. So we were currently sporting some iron plate armor with like five or almost two inches of belt armor, two inches of conning tower armor, all of that. But iron plate armor is incredibly heavy and not super effective. Uh, we're going to upgrade to the most advanced armor that we have available to us, which is ar which is Krupp armor. It's 70% stronger. It's 25% lighter, but it does cost a bit more. Um, interestingly enough, though, I guess because we need less armor of it, it drops our total cost. Um, so that's helpful. And it gets us within the weight range. Um, in that case, I think we'll go with a triple shaft because we've got a little bit more weight to play with. Um, and what is, does the fuel really benefit us at all? Not really. Um, not with a short range ship. Uh, barbettes, I don't think those matter, but we'll set it to number two protection. Uh, we've got a double hold bottom, which I think is important for withstanding torpedo damage. Standard bulkheads, we'll actually go with reinforced bulkheads. It does add a little bit of weight, but it does give us a better floatability, less chance of fire, uh, better fire extinguishing, so we'll go with that. Um, Anti-flood, we'll go with level two. Uh, gives us better water pumping, ship repairs, hull weight does go up. But again, this is going to be important to withstand the enemy torpedoes. A Citadel, we'll go with Citadel 2. I don't really know if this matters, but we'll just do it for now. Uh, meanwhile, in terms of our shells, uh, we'll go with standard shells, standard arm ammo. I'm not actually going to do torpedoes uh, because there's no real purpose to torpedoes against an enemy destroyer. It's going to be too fast and maneuverable for us to hit them with torpedoes. We'll go with Lidite level 1 shells. It's the most advanced gunpowder that we have here. So black powder is heavy. Uh, doesn't give you good muzzle velocity. Adds a lot of weight. Gun cotton allows you to have better HE shell damage. Uh, but it does cost a little bit more. Ammo detonation chances go up as well on your own ship. Chance of fire goes up on your own ship. Uh, Balasite is good for range. Shell damage. Uh, it does increase the cost. It does increase the, sh the muzzle velocity. And it does also have a slightly reduced version of ammo detonation chances against gun cotton, but it's still there. And then you've got Lidite 1, which is uh, dramatically reduced in terms of its shell penetration. The common Lidite is a super high explosive, mainly composed from pyric acid. It's ultra powerful as an explosive charge, but highly sensitive, causing shells to often detonate under impact before penetrating the armor. HE Lidite can be, shells can be very effective against lightly armored targets or cause endless fires to heavy armored ships. I kind of wonder if Lidite is what the Japanese used against the Russians during the Russo-Japanese War. In any event, the shells are much more expensive. It does have a much higher risk of detonating shells, a much higher risk of fires, but it also vastly increases the amount of fires it will cause on the enemy ship. And given we're shooting at destroyers, which don't have a lot of armor, we're going to go with a Lidite level 1. Um, increases cost maybe marginally. Uh, it also didn't really do much with weight. Uh, turrets, I guess, can we, we don't have an, we don't, uh, I think we'll just go with standard hydraulic. We'll go with standard reloading. Range finders, we'll go with level one, because that's the most advanced we can go with. And then we go down to the ship itself. I think we'll reduce the belt armor to one five, just because I don't think there's a huge need, maybe even one. I don't think we're going to be going up against enemy ships that are going to have a ton of penetrating capabilities. So I think reducing the armor a little bit on the ship will help us save a little bit of weight because we don't even have guns on our ship yet. Um, so we're already a little bit, uh, a little bit frail uh, in terms of our uh, budget at the moment. So we're going to go with the main tower, front tower. We've only got one option. We'll put it in the standard spot. Same with the secondary tower. Not a lot of options there. We're almost over cost already. We don't even have a single gun on board our ship yet. We may need to slow it down a little bit. Um, funnels, we're going to go with the enhanced funnel. I think we'll go with two of those. We'll see if that gives us enough engine capacity. Scroll down here. We'll see that our engine efficiency is at 100%. So a double funneled cruiser should be adequate there. Although one must wonder. Two of those is $108,000. Three standard funnels would be 105000 Slightly cheaper. 
Uh, main guns, what do we want to arm these things with? Probably fast firing, accurate uh, shells or guns, right? Because we're going up against an enemy destroyer. So probably four, maybe five inch guns and single, uh, maybe we'll do two double turrets because we're probably going to be chasing them. So actually what I like about this is you can do a double turret in the front. So we could do one in the center, which is kind of a center line turret, or we could do two in the front, which would be able to fire both straight ahead. They can't both do a broadside, but again, we're going to presumably be chasing this enemy cruiser or this enemy destroyer. So um, that's fine. Um... I guess we can do one down each side, down the flanks, and see if we can do one each here. All right, so in this ship, we've got a pretty good range of five-inch shells. We've got two, four, six, eight five-inch guns. I don't really know if we want to do much in the way of secondaries. Um, I suppose we could potentially do three inches here in these casemates on each side. I know we're way overweight now. We'll have to figure this out. But uh, we can do four three inches in these casemates. Um, torpedo launchers, I'm not going to have any just because I don't think it's relevant versus enemy destroyers. I'm going to cut the belt weight down to five, uh, a half an inch. That might be a little bit of a risk, but I'd rather sacrifice armor than speed. Uh, someone go wake up Jackie Fisher because he would love me right now. We'll sacrifice weight on secondaries. I don't even see much of a need to have a turret top. We'll do a tenth of an inch. Same for the deck. There's really no there's no reason to even have any deck armor. We're 500 tons overweight. We'll do half an inch on turret, half an inch on conning. I mean, I again, if we look at like five inch gun penetration characteristics, it can penetrate an inch, 1.3 inches at a thousand meters. So if the enemy has five inch guns, he's gonna chew through us like butter. If he has four inch guns, he's gonna chew through us like butter. I guess an inch of armor would be ideal. That would stop most shells that we'd be facing, but then we'd probably have to sacrifice more on speed. Maybe we should just do that and see what happens here. The deck armor I don't think is relevant. We're not going to get plunging shots, but I guess we should at least set our conning tower um, and our uh, turrets to one each. Maybe one five. I don't need belt extended to be one five. Belt extended can probably be 0.8. Turret and conning tower should both be 1-5. That should make us relatively safe to anything that we think the enemy destroyers might have. Inside a 1,000. That does put us about 500 tons over weight and about $200,000 over budget. The enemy's moving at 26 knots. What if we slow down to 28? That gets us close. 27.5 gets us closer. 27 gets us both gets us on cost. It doesn't get us back on weight. If I shrink the ship, that doesn't help. So maybe just withdrawing these rear turrets, because I'm not going to be using them anyway. Maybe just the side turrets. Get rid of these casemates, too. Get us back up to 3,500 tons. We're still about 100 tons overweight. I could probably change these main battery guns to 4 inchers. I don't think that'll matter for an enemy destroyer. So we'll do that. We'll switch our main battery down to four inch guns. We'll do the doubles down the side. It's still overweight though, interestingly enough. Oh, that's just because the displacement will drop down. So just slightly overweight at this point. Little bit top heavy in the front. We'll switch some of that back a bit. Move our funnels back. Does that help? Uh, four offsets, only a percent, so that's okay. We'll just drop two of these. What's that going to give us? It's going to give us a broadside of three four-inch guns. It's just going to take a long time to kill the bad guy. Even if I drop my casemates entirely... I guess we could go with a reduced ammo load, right? We're only going to be going up against one enemy ship. Add those four inches there. Standard shells. Reduced allotment of those shells. Almost gets us back within range. We could drop the Citadel to one. That gets us way back within comfort range. We could actually bring our uh, ammo shells back up to standard. Oh, no, we can't. Well, if we get rid of the Citadel altogether...
Yeah. We'll just get rid of the Citadel altogether. Can we put those casemate guns back in there, the two inchers? We can. Nice. So we can afford two inch casemate guns. It's 3,470 tons, cost 2.295 million. Uh, the armament of this ship is 10 4 inch guns, 4 2 inch guns. She makes a top speed of 27 knots. I'd like to do 27 and a half. I can't do that. What if I drop the casemate guns? Will we save 64? No, we'll only save five tons. What if we drop these? Almost. We go reduced. Almost. Anti-flood one. We got it! So if we just cut back our defenses a little bit, I can probably afford the two inchers now, too. All right. So reduced shell allotment here. We made a few changes here. Eight four-inch guns, four two-inch guns, reduced ammo. Um, we've got enough weight here. We can make 27 and a half knots, which is a knot and a half faster than the enemy ship. Forced boilers, coal, um, multiple expansion steam engines, triple shaft. Um, you know, part of me wonders if, if we cut the weight here, how much, what's the difference there in weight? If we go from double to triple, it's about 50 tons. What's the difference between a 4-inch and a 5-inch? I'm confused. Why is there... The 5-inch doesn't fit there? Really? So the five inch would fit on the edge though here though, right? Interesting. I guess I'd rather go with more four inchers than fewer five inchers. Sorry, I'm just tweaking some of this and it's probably annoying to watch. All right, can we add two more? We can, can we add two more? We can, all right. So now we got a whole bunch more guns now. So we've actually got 12 four inchers along the side of the ship. We've got four, uh, two inchers, uh, forty-seven or four three thousand four hundred tons. Top speed of twenty-seven point five knots. Armor belt of one and a half. Uh, conning tower and turrets of one and a half. Secondaries of one and a half. Um, range finder as advanced as it gets, I think. Yeah, and um, we can build one of these things. So we're going to be going up against one enemy destroyer, and hopefully. We uh, we do well. No, J Street, I'm not going to go with the 8-inch guns. Uh, we can put uh, torpedoes on light cruisers, but we're not going to do that. Um, yeah, this is basically a German protected cruiser. If you think about the German protected cruisers early in World War One, most of them were like 4.9-inch guns or 4.4-inch guns. I can't remember. They were Krupp rapid-firing guns. Uh, their armor was relatively weak. They were pretty fast. Um, but the British cruisers probably fared better than the German ones did, but in any event, we'll see how this plays out. Yes, 12 102 millimeter and four 50 millimeter guns. Sir William Christopher Packingham, 10 July 1861 to 28 July 1933, was a highly awarded Royal Navy officer in the early years of his career. He served as a British observer with the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Russo-Japanese War and was nearly killed at the Battle of Tsushima by fragments of a Russian shell. He later served in World War I and participated in the Battle of Jutland. Good job, Sir Christopher Packingham. Or William Christopher Packingham. Alright, there's the enemy. Go get the fuck. Get that speed up. Get ready to turn into them torpedoes. Open fire! Alright, so the enemy is shooting at me. We've got all these guns here. What does he have? We don't actually know what guns he has. It does look like he is turning to run. So, it does look like this ship has two double torpedo tubes in the rear. I'm trying to see what they have in the front. They've got a single shielded gun here. They've got a single gun in the rear. Uh, they've got two 
smaller starboard guns. Probably two inches, I would guess. Whoa, there's enemy torpedoes in the water already. So we're going to turn into them. There's no way those are going to hit us. Good thing they're no threat for us. You can see the rapid fire of our shells just careening out here. We're going to switch these shells over into HE because we want to burn the enemy. Uh, I'm guessing we're already firing HE shells. We've already struck a couple hits there. Um, so now that the enemy has fired his torpedoes off and he is running, we can turn back here to swing our broadside over to get our shells uh, into him. You can see here just the rapid fire of our four inchers along the side of our ship. Good deal of smoke. Uh, all pouring toward the enemy. His float damage is already 78. Looks like that first shell hit did do some flooding damage here in the center of his vessel. And he is moving, presumably, at his max speed. We're closing in on 27 and a half knots as well. And our own shells are causing more flooding. So another hit there and more flooding damage being caused. Main tower destroyed and a fire started. Oh, big explosion there. 175 in terms of damage. This guy is in trouble. You've got an engine damage, you've got a fire, and you've got flooding. This is going to be a short battle. This cruiser is just pounding him. Pounding him with lots and lots of rapid fire shells. He's listing heavily. He looks like he's slowing down. His torpedoes missed. Fired way too early, presumably. He just can't withstand the firepower of your uh, truly uh, the historical gamer's cruiser. Another hit there. Damage the funnel. Funnel destroyed. Structure damage is at 78, which is still reasonably good, but his flotation is down below 20. Doing some damage control, but another fire and flooding. You can see he's flooding all along the, the bottom of the ship. I can't imagine she's going to be saved. Under 10% flotation here. She's dead in the water and listing heavily. More hits. There's an explosion there. Fire. And there she goes. Heavy flooding. Well, that was a quick battle. Do we even take any damage? Maybe a little bit. Woo! Victory! All right, guys, and that'll do it for today's episode of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This was the first light cruiser that we built, and it's easy to see uh, why I was being a little bit critical of the historical German light cruiser design's reliance on the sort of four and a half inch guns. But you could see there, they're very effective against enemy destroyers, and um, perhaps that's why the Germans built them. Uh, with that being said, this is a natural stopping point. This was taken from a stream from just the other day. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you guys for watching and continuing to support the channel. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thanks for watching. And I'm out.